So the 23 player roster is out. Now it's down to 22 players without Sam Ewis. And we're going to run through it. And I want to hear your starting lineups. For anyone who hasn't seen it yet, we did do an episode right when this roster dropped talking about it. Lori was there. Sandra was there talking about the different players and who all was called in. Um, I'm going to run through the roster quickly for anyone who didn't listen to that or hasn't seen the roster yet. For goalkeepers, three of them, Bella Bigsby, Aubrey Kingsbury, and Alyssa Nair. Defenders, Alana Cook, Abby Dahlkamper, Imani Imani Dorsey, Emily Fox, Sofia Huerta, Naomi Gurma, Kelly O'Hara. Midfielders, Lindsey Horan, Jalen Howe, Rose Lavelle, Kat Macario, Christy Mewis, Ashley Sanchez, Andy Sullivan. Forwards, five of them rounding out this group. Ashley Hatch, Mallory Pugh, Margaret Purse, Trinity Rodman, and Sophia Smith. Of course, Sam Ewis not listed on this roster anymore. So big chunk of players, 22, a lot of them on the younger side. We've talked about this last time, Lori. When you look at this, Jill, I'm going to go to you first. When you take a look at this roster, are you surprised that anyone got called in any of the younger players that called in? Are you surprised at who didn't get called in? We got Lori's thoughts on this before, but I want to hear from you. Is there anyone missing from this list or you're surprised to see? Um, I think it's tough. I mean, I think there's a lot of young players in there and I think you need some veterans um, back in the mix, the leadership, the, they know the identity and, and certainly um, Kelly O'Hara and, and Alyssa Nair have been there, done that, um, and been successful in World Cups and Olympics. And I think you need some of those veterans and maybe a couple more um, back into that mix just to, like, we're so close to qualifying. And um, we need that that leader um, when things go wrong who have experienced it and know how to stay calm under pressure um, and who can help guide, because once you get to your first world cup and first Olympics, your eyes are so big and you're like, Oh my gosh, we're here. Um, (laughs) and do you need some people like, yeah, okay, we're here. You know, we've done this before and we're going to do it again. Lori, when you look at this, I know you did talk with Sandra about this right when this roster Mm -hmm. dropped, but is there anyone missing that you did want to see on this list? That's not here. I don't think so. I think in terms of the younger players, this is pretty complete. Um, you know, I'm in the same kind of boat as as Jill, except, uh, you know, you want to have that mix. I think we do already know what the veteran players can do. And we know Megan Rapino is still coming back from an injury. Alex Morgan, Kristen Press are starting to get into their form in the NWSL. There's a couple of players that Flacco Ananoski said specifically, I need them to be performing in the NWSL. And in some ways, though, for these games, it does make sense that those veteran players aren't in here in the fact that they will still continue to get the minutes um, with their club teams. However, it is a tight window. Outside of these two games, you have two more international games prior to Vlaco having to announce the roster. So this will be interesting. And I think it's more about the mix in these games and who he puts out to be able to see kind of start to see some partnerships. I love that transition. It is all (laughs) about the mix of the players, player personnel, who you put out there, different Mm -hmm. positions. We've seen Kat Macario being thrown into the nine role up top, not her usual role in the midfield. Uh, I want to hear it. Jill, we're going to start with you. You are the coach. You've got your cap on. You've got the whiteboard with your marker starting 11 on Saturday for the United States against Uzbekistan. Who do you have? All right, let's start with the goalkeeper, obviously. Oh, of course. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I think Alyssa Nair is our solid one. I think she's the best goalkeeper in America right now. Um, but I'm going to go with Aubrey Kingsbury because I think she needs experience. Um, Alyssa Nair is still uh, – co- she's come back from her injury, right? But the number two spot is wide open, in my opinion, um, with Casey Murphy being out injured. Um, A.D. French not being called in, Jane Campbell not being called in. We need an experience number two, or at least some experience. You don't want your first cap to be in qualifying. Um, So I would say I'm going to start with Aubrey. She's been the most consistent goalkeeper uh, for the last few years in the league. And I think a lot of people have question marks about her feet, but I think um, with some really quality players on the back line that, that that problem will be solved. All right, Why are you laughing, Lauren? Oh, I, I, I'm just <laughs> loving the conversation already. So Me keep too. it going. Let's go. Get your back keep, four in there. Keep going. We're All going right. your whole roster, and then we'll do ours. So keep going. All Moving right. up the line. All I right. Like I it. have uh, 
Fox at left back and Sofia Huerta at right back. I think they're the two most dynamic, creative, um, but also really quality defensive players as well. Um, and the thing that I like about um, Huerta and Fox is their intelligence. Um, they understand space. So um, they can get into those wide channels, um, but they can also leak in on the inside in the half spaces as well. And their intelligence of understanding where the ball is, where my teammates are, where the opponents are, um, is just really special. So I think that they can help in the attacking side um, in those half spaces, but they also can help in our rest defense as well. Um, center backs, I have Naomi Gurma and Alana Cook. I want to see um, what Gurma can do. She has uh, so much talent. And I think when you play against a team, an Eastern European team, you do need some center backs who are quality on the ball. So Gurma, uh, Gurma is, is good at progressing the ball at the back. And you also need center backs who can um, help in terms of counterattack. So Alana Cook is like, that's her main job at OL Reign. Um, her team gets up high up the field, and she's kind of like that uh, center back that can read passes, intercept passes on the counterattack, big, strong player if they try to look direct. Um, so I like that back four. Then, I'm going to just ask a question about this. So Gurma, she plays alongside Doll Camper at San Diego, but you don't have them starting. Why? I'm just curious. Why alongside Cook? Um, yeah, I think Cook can provide us more support in the counterattacking moments. And I think her big, strong physique, if teams look to go direct into their nine to set play from the nine, that Cook can challenge those. She's good in the air. And when you're playing against a team that's that sits in, um, it's difficult to break them down where you could earn potential corner kicks and set pieces from those moments. And Alana Cook is really good in the air. So that gives you another method of breaking down teams in low blocks. Cool. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I like it, Jill. Keep it going. Are you going to, so you, you, it looks like a four three three is what we're yeah. getting from you. So who are your three in the midfield? Um, I'm going with goalkeepers in the midfield. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Listen there, the sixth position. Um, I'm going to go with Andy Sullivan. Uh, I think she's really good disruptor and, and quality on the ball uh, with Haran and, and Sanchez. That's my midfield. And then up top I have Sorry, Jill, who was that besides Sanchez and Sullivan? Haram. Got it. Got it. Okay, cool. And then I got Pew, Pew, Pew on the left. Uh, <laughs> Kat Macario in the nine, playing in a little bit more of a false nine position. And then Sophia Smith on the right. And I went with Smith because I think she's going to be important in these games where teams sit in a little bit. And we know that she can break lines and transition. We know how lethal she is when she gets in between and has space to run in front of her but now i want to see like hey can you break down low blocks can you play in quick combination um can you find space and create space for yourself when there's very limited um space i love this lineup i like the midfield unit you have this is crazy jill i had the same exact back seven <laughs> as nice. you. back four and then midfield three um I'm curious about Macario and and being that false nine along with Pew and Smith up front. What kind of movement do you want to see from them? I know you're mainly focused on the goalkeepers here with Nair in the six, but we'll get to that <laughs> substitute. Listen, but hold on real quick. I love this comment, though, from Emily Grace. Uh, I think it's Rezzer. She's like, Nair would dominate as a six. I love her. <laughs> no That's doubt. So, uh, listen, you've already got some – you've won some people over. They're on the same page as you. Of course. <laughs> it's true. I, they, they appreciate it. So with your, your front three that you have, Macario as the false nine, uh, did you like what you've seen when Andonovsky has put her in that role? Or do you think she can provide more being alongside Pew and Smith up front? Um, yeah, I kind of like her in that false nine role because when you play against teams who are going to sit in, she can try to come back into the midfield and they can look for some counter movement, um, either with Ashley Sanchez or Lindsay Horan making those runs in between. Um, but I also think when she drops back into the midfield, that potentially could open up space for Pew and Smith to attack, um, as well as like Haran can get out wide, Sanchez can get out wide, Fox and Sophia Huerta can come on the mm -hmm. inside. I just think that it adds another layer of, um, it's just dynamic. And I think that the movement of Cat can pull center backs out and make a lot of space in between the lines. I think that that could be really helpful.
So we have your starting 11 that you're putting out on, on the pitch. Um, did you have a first rotation in, or if, if you had to make any changes or is this what you're sticking with? I know I'm throwing this at you. It wasn't in our rundown, but is, <laughs> is, is there a first substitute that you would want to see being thrown into this mix? Because the three in the midfield between Haran Sanchez and Andy Sullivan, I love that combination. I think that uh, Sanchez and Lindsay Haran, I really want to see them play together in that attacking role. Uh, but who's first rotation for you first off the bench do you think um I know she's injured but it would probably be Becky Sauerbrunn is that an acceptable answer Wait, no <laughs> she's not listed in the roster I'm just fly her in get um, healthy yeah exactly <laughs> um I'm kidding um in the front line um I, I obviously want to see Trinity. I mean, yeah. Trinity is like, um, she's got everything. She can do it all. She can beat you with pace. Um, she's dominant in the air. Um, and then my, my biggest question is like, we know she can do it at the NWSL stage when we're a transition league. Can she do it against teams that um, are going to make it really difficult? Mm -hmm. um, not sure this Eastern European team is going to be able to provide that opportunity, but I'm looking forward to see if she can do it at the international stage. And I, I think getting, that. yeah, I think getting her some minutes and, and getting her um, comfortable with the, the, the style of play and with the, the different players, I think that could be really helpful. I like that rotation, having Trinity in there. All right, Jill, thank you for that. We're going to pass the coaching baton over to Lori because uh, not one, but two starting lineups we might be getting from Lori Lindsay here. Let's hear them. Okay, well, I did too because there's certainly going to be rotations from game one to game two, no doubt, or I at least imagine. There or you would just be with had this. to one-up us. It's yeah, fine. Actually, that is that is what happened here. And now um, we'll go with that. Um, so I am very much similar to both of you. However, um, I do have some differences. So I, for the first game release or my my first starting lineup, I have Alyssa Nair because she is get in goal. She is coming back from injury. I think, you know, when you think about, to, to Jill's point, in terms of having some of that leadership when there's very little on this team right now, I have Alyssa starting because I think she can um, bring that vocal leadership from the back. Um, I don't expect a ton of... Um, work for her to do in this game. No offense to Uzbekistan. I think that just is, could be the reality of this, these couple games. And, um, but still that vocal leadership um, from the back would be important from her. And then I have Fox and Huerta on the outsides as well. Um, you know, in, in a lot of cases, we already know and seen what Kelly O'Hara can do. So I actually have Huerta um, starting in both games as that right back, because I think it's invaluable for her to be able to get some minutes to be able to see how she um, can create. We saw her score a beautiful goal for OL Reign um, a couple weekends ago. So what can she do from that back position? I will stay, take a step back. I do have Kingsbury starting in the second game because exactly okay. what Jill's saying as um, needing minutes with Bella Bixby and her having no caps yet, um, getting some valuable minutes, but Kingsbury allowing her to at least come in at halftime, maybe in that first game, but definitely getting the start in the second game. Um, my two center backs, though, for the first game are Dahl Kemper and Cook. Um, again, just, you know, I don't think the the center back for Naomi, I'm not so sure she gets called into this camp if there weren't the injuries that we've seen with Becky Sauerbrunn, Tierna Davidson. So that's the only reason why I don't have her starting. I think she's very deserving. Um, she's been solid throughout these um, first games for San Diego. However, I do put Cook and Dahl Kemper in there for this first game. Um, and then I have Dahl Kemper and Gurma for the second start. Um, just because of that partnership that they have with San Diego and see what that looks like at the national team level. Uh, and then midfield, hell yeah, all three of us are on the same page. I do have Sullivan, Sanchez, and Haran. Um, you know, I think, again, we've seen Rose in there. We've seen um, who else? Um, we've seen uh, Christy Mewis quite a bit. Uh, so just giving Sanchez and Haran to see what they look like, especially with in these games. And I'll talk about this a little bit later. I have Sullivan starting in both games of that six, because I think this mm -hmm. is an important um, two game series for her in terms of solidifying that position and what it means in that position when you do have a team that's potentially going to sit in that mid to low block that we've been talking about. Um, and then up top, uh, I have Macario is uh, nine, Smith on the right, and then Pew on the left. 
And in particular, with, yeah, same as Joe. <laughs> in particular with Lucario, um, one, I think she's been lights out with Club and Country recently. And no doubt, um, bright, bright future is I think we can all agree upon. But I like her in that nine because I do feel like she's starting to come into her own and um, feel the tempo of the national team a little bit more. You know, there's a lot of discussion. Do we play our wide? Do we play our attacking mid? And especially leading up to the Olympics last year, I don't think we quite saw her capabilities then a little bit of a coming out party at the She Believes Cup and her movement seemed more confident. So, but I think with Haran helping set play with Sullivan, but then also her abilities to get in behind and then Sanchez, we've seen her in the NWSL being able to um, get into more attacking positions. I think that could be a really interesting mix with those three of Haran, Sanchez and Macario, especially in those central areas. And then Jill said it, Perfectly. Can't I can't go against that with Pew and Smith and yeah. their abilities to get isolated, hopefully serve dangerous balls in. And I think ultimately it'll be how do they um, partner up with those outside backs for Smith would be Huerta and then Pew for Fox. Um, but real quickly, I'll just go to what my round out my last um, my my second uh, starting lineup. So I. For Kingsbury, I said Dahl Kemper and Gurma anchoring the, the center back position, where to again, and then I have Imani Dorsey because I would mm, really like to see yeah. her. I think she adds something that we don't um, – she's been really solid for Gotham, and i just interested to see her at this level and continue to develop her game. I, As I mentioned before, Sullivan in that number six again, and this time I have Mewis and Lavelle. So I think that gives you a, a – quite a bit of a different look. I think yeah. it would be important in this um, starting lineup though, then Chrissy Mewis is more of that um, um, help out with Sullivan, um, her ran role at more of a number eight than just getting into the attack. Uh, but then up top hatch purse on the right and Rodman on the left. I love the rotation that you're throwing in there. I want to take a look at Josh Ka, I'm going to say, in our mm -hmm. chat. He said, this is a good chance for younger defenders to get time with Alyssa Nair. I really like this point, especially as you mentioned, Lori, you're starting in your first game, Nair in the back with Doll Camper and Cook. Mm -hmm. um, I like that group and that core group of, of defensive trio right along the center back down the spine of the team. Um you mentioned Andy Sullivan. She's getting the start in both of these for you at, at the six role. And you talked about having to play against a team that's most likely going to sit in that low block. Mm -hmm. As a six for Andy Sullivan, what is her role offensively against a low block? Yeah, an outlet. An outlet consistently being the one that's going to help set play. I think always offering support. I think at times, depending on who's who is the mix in there, her ran could drop deep and, and help set play as well. That allows Andy to get higher up the field. But in, in a situation that I think that we're going to see the U.S. team in, just pushing numbers forward isn't mm -hmm. always going to be the most fruitful. So can Andy, with playing quickly, helping set the tempo, whether it's side to side, whether it's quick little set um, slip passes in centrally, then I do think that that will be her role to be able to, you know, kind of pull this Uzbekistan team out of their defensive shape as much as possible. But again, it's just going to be an mm -hmm. outlet constantly moving the ball. I have that. And we're going to talk about that later, kind of like what we want to see, but that is one of my things is like Sullivan, how can she help, um, with the tempo, because I think a lot of times when we talk about patience, we think, oh, we need to slow the pace down, but that's not the case. You can play quickly. You can, and you can still decide, okay, let's look for the next pass. Let's look for another pass until it opens up and there's a clear, more clear opportunities going forward. I love these lineups that we have. As I mentioned, mine is very similar to yours. I have Kingsbury starting Fox, Cook, Germa, and Huerta across my back line. Andy Sullivan, Haran, and Sanchez in the midfield. And Pew, Hatch, and Smith up front. I want to see Hatch with players like Pew and Smith and what that trio can do because they possess a lot of the same 
initial tendencies, but their talents are different from each other because Hatch can also drop back and receive the ball at her feet and then quickly spin out. And I think that if Hatch can drop into that hole and try to receive that ball with Pew and Smith running diagonally off her shoulders, that could be really dangerous and a fun way for that front three that is younger with a little bit less experience in this type of situation to try mm -hmm. to break down a, a block. Um, but first off the bench for me, I have Rose Lavelle. I would like to see her alongside Sanchez as well yeah in that midfield I think That's that Lavelle and Sanchez together um will be interesting mm -hmm. honestly they R Rose sometimes gets the ball and she just runs in front of her and I want to see what Sanchez does and how she reacts when Rose takes off with the ball is she going to try to help support that or is she going to try to make a run off of Lavelle's run and receive the ball that way from her. Um, the support between those two with Sullivan sitting in behind, I, I'm i actually super excited to see kind of how that rotates through. Um, but Macario up top too, I, I, I love that. I think we're going to see it. We saw it before with Lackland and how Kat Macario can be in that nine role and, and be a withheld nine supporting so much. Um, this I love these starting lineups. I like that we got a little bit of rotation. Who's coming in off the bench? Lori above and beyond. A plus for you. Sure, <laughs> fine. Overachiever giving us two starting lineups. Um, and and Jill, of course, you giving us yours. And maybe we'll see Nair in the midfield. But Jill, <laughs> yes, you have who a thought. Is, yeah. Who are you guys putting the captain armband on? Oh, I love this question, Lori. Um, go ahead. Yeah, Jill, go for I'm, it. Jill. I'm going to go with Andy Sullivan. That would be my captain. Yeah, you know, I was I was kind of leaning that way too. Uh, I think with the lineups that I have, I would probably go with Dull Kemper, mm -hmm. um, with her starting the two um, games. Um, however, I do think Andy Sullivan is a good shout, and I think that's an interesting one to play around with it a little bit as well to um, – you know, give that confidence to say, hey, we do see you as that impact player, somebody that needs to be vocal, also lead by example. And no doubt, I think we've seen Andy do that. And I still I still feel like with Sullivan, there's this like a whole nother level, right, that she can get to as well. I honestly think with the midfield, I have Sullivan, um, Haran, and Sanchez. I think Haran would get to wear it in, in this opening match, especially in my lineup. I have Fox, Cook, Gurma, and Huerta across the back line. So Haran being my experienced leader in that midfield. 